table number five is the eighth chapter in X-Men Ten of Swords, a story continuing from the creation event kickoff, opening with Cyclops, Cable, and Jean on the peak. The orbital sword station currently devoid of its entire crew and basically floating in space like a haunted satellite. Ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. Today I'll answer, what is Cable's role in Ten of Swords? What's the relevance of Sword, the Shield of Space, and why did Saturnine send Cable to the peak in the first place? Who or what? are the Vescora, and theories and predictions for what's to come, both in Cable and in Ten of Swords moving forward. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. You are listening to Crack and Krakoa number 103. If you like the Comic Book Herald YouTube channel or Crack and Krakoa, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. It helps me out a great deal in terms of promoting the channel and getting new listeners. Spoilers for discussed comics may follow. Writer Jerry Duggan, artist Phil Noto, letters Joe Sabino. In creation, Saturnine sent a psychic message to Cable and Rachel Summers that they need to access the Peak, the orbital headquarters of S.W.O.R.D., Marvel's protectors of space. Using the light of Galador, Cable was able to lead Cyclops and Jean Grey up to the space station, only to find that all the S.W.O.R.D. agents had vanished. The trio splits up to search the base. Jean first finds one possessed S.W.O.R.D. agent, and he describes to her, you know, kind of what has come and has wiped out all of the S.W.O.R.D. agents. It calls it a faceless death, something called the the Vascora. Within 10 minutes, we see in the sword transmission logs, they wiped out the sword uh, occupied base. He mentions that sword agents that are you know, were there, that they never made it back. They went to the other side and never came back. That is definitely a seed, I think, that we may see later, right? It could just mean they went out there and were wiped out, the same as the sword agents on base, but they went into the other side where the Vescora are from. Could they still be out there? Always a possibility. For their part, Cyclops and Cable discover a massive extra-dimensional or open door to space, and when the S.W.O.R.D. headquarters is powered up, the doorway is opened up again. This development and the issue as a whole really preserves the lingering question, why did Saturnine send them to this station? Cable suspects a warning, potentially, whereas Cyclops suspects a murder trap. I've been theorizing that the S.W.O.R.D. acronym is a literal 10th S.W.O.R.D. Krakoa can use to gain an advantage, but again, the infiltrated base is kind of a death trap, and that assumes Saturnine wants to help, uh, which, you know, I don't really think we can take as a given. I think she wants whatever outcome preserves Otherworld and her status, but otherwise has very little interest in what's going to happen for Krakoa or what's going to happen for mutant kind. I would also call attention to, you know, the fact that this doorway leading to where the Vescora are from reminds me a lot of the Siege Perilous, the the doorway that kind of has all these mysterious mystical properties that writer Chris Claremont used a lot, not a lot, but after the fall of mutants in particular in his late 80s uh, X-Men work. On the other side of the doorway, we are introduced to the Vescora, an alien race that as far as I can tell has not had a role in Marvel to this point. The spacesuits made me think that they could have some connection to the other sect of Arakan mutants, uh, Arako of course being the, the mutants that were lost to the dimension of Amenth who are engaging in this tournament battle in Ten of Swords, and, and they took to space to explore. We learned in that creation uh, issue there was a, sec- a sect of them that went to space to kind of go a different way, uh, but I still kind of prefer the idea that those Arakan explorers are already in league with Saturn in Otherworld, and that these Vescora are something else entirely. There is a really interesting quote from one of the Vescora here. It says, Only when death is uniform can our work begin to mine the truth of the past. Now, this is very vague. (laughs) It could mean a, a whole bunch of things. I suspect it will become clear as this mystery is unveiled, but definitely the line there, only when death is uniform, I mean, that to me immediately screams out to, like, what's going on with Resurrection in Krakoa, where death is not what it once was. There is this change. There is sort of this fighting, there's the death of death idea going on both in X-Men, but also in books like Immortal Hulk, where the Immortal Hulk and kind of the Hulk family have this immortality to them that they've found now. I'll be interested to see if that really ties in. So the Vescora, they come through this doorway, Cable, Jean, and Cyclops, they fend them off. Jean herself goes through the door, she ventures to the other side to witness a Vescora cannon essentially pouring into the station. It's just like an endless horde of these creatures coming their way, so Cyclops gets to let loose a little bit. He opens up the optic blasts, and of course they, they're fending off the Vescora while Cable literally is running back to where the Light of Galador has powered up the sword uh, station, the peak, and has to take that out so that the game here is we need to turn off the power again because once the station is operational the Vescora just keep coming and that is essentially where we end the issue uh, at least as far as we're concerned with with sword who are the Vescora well 
We don't get a lot here, but one possibility is that it could be one of the failed realities highlighted in the Blight Spoke section of Otherworld data pages that rounds out the 10 realms of Otherworld in this issue. This could be some sort of multiversal hell dimension, and certainly the Vescora brings to mind Annihilation's hordes, or even Thanos' Chutari. Um, you know, like, it, basically any massive, massive wave of enemies that we've seen in Marvel history. Knowing that a sword ongoing for Mal Ewing and Valeria Yoshidi is coming out of this event, I do hope we have reason to explore Sword, the Vescora, and this mystery a lot more, because clearly through this issue alone, the answers are unresolved. I'll find it disappointing if this all kind of sets up the sword ongoing, as opposed to actually get some sort of resolution itself in the Ten of Swords event. I mean, it, it should and kind of has to have relevance to this event, otherwise it'll feel like a really weird red herring. Also, in today's weirdest crack and Krakoa connection of the day, if you search for the name of the Sheriff of Blightspoke here, the, the named one, it's Gia Whitechapel, you can see there, uh, you will find a slew of porn results about public urination. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to take a moment to clear my search history, then clear it again for good measure. I do like getting to see in this issue protective dad Cyclops with his summer family all together. Scott volunteers, you know, here to take Cable's place, much like we saw a handful of others do with Doug Ramsey in New Mutants, purely out of protection and out of, you know, the, the attempt to keep his son out of harm's way. It's kind of funny how many mutants need Saturnine to provide a detailed rules pamphlet before this stabbing tournament to the death can take place, because there's a lot of questioning, like, well, does it have to be you who goes, just because you have the sword and maybe were prophesied or could anyone take your place there are some questions definitely and answers do not seem forthcoming psych and magic's convo from new mutants continues with gene leading telepathically and uh, gene thinks that a whole lot of telepaths hammering the the, the barriers of other world could allow for telepathic communication there um so that i think we can look forward to in ten of swords and now basically the only other kind of revelation there is a uh, gene request that magic look out for cable which means that magic is now on watch out duty for cable and doug it makes me feel like they're setting magic up actually to be so distracted and and protective of those around her but i don't actually necessarily suspect harm is coming magic's way i have her ranked pretty low on the characters that might actually get it in other world rankings just because like she is a strong character she's on the cover of new mutants number 14 after this event and i don't think like taking her out would necessarily have a massive massive impact or really have been built to successfully i, I do also think too like cyclops extreme confidence that when he's smiling tells cable we're going to be okay i mean yeah it could be potentially just being reassuring but it sure feels like a reason to really watch out for cable um if it weren't for the fact that cable is on the first two covers of the solicited sword comic coming out after this event as well this issue felt the most deliberately obtuse, I think, of the Ten of Swords chapters so far, with the disappointing lack of answers or real developments. I mean, really, more than anything, we get questions on top of questions. It doesn't deliver a whole heck of a lot. Um, there's an impertinence to the Dugan Noda era of Cable, where these issues can fly by, like you're playing a, a podcast at one point in time, 1.5 times speed you know like that the issues just have this feeling like they are going faster than you necessarily intend them to and come away feeling like not necessarily that much happens um i like the comics they produce but they move a little too quick there's just not that much to chew on that approach to storytelling really exacerbates the patience of this event i think now eight issues in approaching the midway point and still very much in the getting ready to actually have our event part of the story you know definitely like asking fans to invest in 22 chapters was a tall order already i've mostly enjoyed the approach it has taken like okay we're going to kick off what is the event it's going to be a big sword fight tournament now everybody has to find their swords on the x-men side of things i think that's good and and i think cable here was a missed opportunity because cable already has his sword this investigation of the sword facility was extremely intriguing. I mean, again, because that series is coming after this event, because Al Ewing's writing it, like, that's a big deal. That's something I'm very invested in as a Marvel fan and as an X-Men fan. And this issue just doesn't deliver uh, much in terms of, like, what what is that actually going to be? What does that look like? And what is the relevance to this event? Those questions are not answered in the text, right? It's kind of left to us and to theory to sort of postulate what that might be moving forward. So I'm, again, it, it, this is all criticism to say, like, I, I 
expect this event will continue to be good, but I think Cable as a series and Duggan and Noda's work, like there has to be a little more to it, a little more to chew on to fit in with the rest of the comics, which are delivering a whole heck of a lot. So next up, we're going to have, uh, I think chapter nine is going to be Excalibur issue and it, the Krakoan in this issue reads Avalon. So we'll be going to King Jamie Braddock, a.k.a. Monarch, perhaps uh, for Betsy to have a little family reunion. But hey, if you got comments and theories for what's coming in Ten of Swords or with this issue in particular, uh, definitely let me know down in the comments on the channel here. Uh, and definitely, if you like these, the Crack and Crico digs into all these comics, please consider liking and subscribing and uh, sharing if you if you are so inclined. That means a lot to me. So thanks, everybody. Uh, you can check out ways to support Comic Book Herald at patreon.com slash comic book herald. You can support the site for as little as is one dollar a month and hey if you actually if you sign up uh, for an annual support now you can get a 10 percent discount on that uh, on your support through a new patreon annual membership feature so that goes a whole heck of a long way and you get some cool benefits and perks if you are interested in doing that i'm dave you can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com at comicbookherald on social if you look for the best comics ever in my marvelous year podcast you can find me talking there as well so thanks everybody for listening and as always enjoy the comics